In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, as we gather on this fifth Sunday of Lent, we hear in the Gospel of John today the miracle of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. It gives us all great comfort and consolation to know that all things are possible with God. We pause for a moment now to truly prepare our hearts to celebrate these wondrous and sacred mysteries as we call to mind our sins and ask the Lord now to fill us with his grace, his pardon, and peace. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and your blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and have you rise from them, O my people, I will put my spirit in you that you may live, and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised, and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Trust in the Lord, my soul trusts. 
trust in his word. More than sentinels wait for the dawn. Let Israel wait for the A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him, but if Christ is in you, Although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your model, mortal bodies also through his spirit dwelling in you. The word of the Lord. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. The sisters of Lazarus sent word to Jesus, saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said, 
I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, shall live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. He became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me. But because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what he had done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's Gospel presents us with one of Jesus' most powerful miracles, the raising of Lazarus from the dead. Jesus raised other people from the dead in his earthly ministry, like the daughter of Jairus and the son of the widow of Nain, as recorded in the Gospels. However, they had only been dead a, a short time. Lazarus, on the other hand, had been dead for four days and was already buried. We see nothing else like this in all the Gospels until Jesus himself is raised from the dead. Lazarus and his sisters Martha and Mary were among Jesus' closest friends. They lived in Bethany, just a few hours' walk from Jerusalem. Many times we are told that Jesus would stay at their house and have dinner with them. It is clear throughout today's reading that Jesus loved them dearly. So when Lazarus falls ill, Martha and Mary have word sent to Jesus. They had a great deal of faith and hope in Jesus and were sure that he would come and heal their brother. We can imagine Martha and Mary sitting by the bedside of Lazarus, reassuring him that Jesus was on his way and everything would be all right. However, Jesus fails to appear. They wait and wait, but it is not until Lazarus has already been dead for four days that Jesus comes to Bethany. And by then, it all seems too late. We can almost hear the hurt and disappointment in Martha's voice when she says, Lord, if you had only had been here, my brother would never have died. Martha echoes the if-onlys that we often say to ourselves in this life. If only I were not sick. If only I had enough money. If only my spouse, my father, my mother, my child would not have died. And especially right now, 
The whole world is asking if only the coronavirus had been stopped from spreading. Like Martha, we may wonder why God seems so silent and distant when we need him most. Despite their grief, Martha and Mary, though, do not lose hope or faith in Jesus. Martha says, but even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give to you. And later she confesses, I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. Like Martha and Mary, we have to face the if-onlys of our own lives with faith and hope in God's love and power. We don't know why there is so much suffering in our world. However, we do know that God is always with us and that in some way that we cannot always see, he is bringing good from it all. Just look at all the people right now who continue to put their lives on the line to make sure that we have what we need to provide for our safety, our good health, and our well-being. In this life, we only see part of the picture. All we are called to do is each day to pick up our cross and follow Jesus, trusting that God has everything under control. That does not mean that we are destined to a life of drudgery and pain. Not at all. Because Jesus says it so clearly today, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. God wants to do great things through us, especially through our weakness and our suffering. Consider today's gospel. Jesus could have gone quickly to Lazarus' bedside and cured him. That would have been a great miracle, and no doubt many people would have come to believe in Jesus because of it. However, by waiting with faith and trust, Martha and Mary witnessed an even greater miracle, the raising of their brother from the dead. And because of it, they experienced an even greater joy and more people came to believe in Jesus. My sisters and brothers, the same is true in our lives. It is true that God can take away all of our suffering and pain. However, he wants to do something even greater in our lives. Maybe accepting suffering in our life with patience and courage inspires others to accept the challenges in their lives. Perhaps offering up our hurt to God is opening channels of grace that are bringing sinners to repentance. Like Martha and Mary, we must face the difficulties of our lives with faith. We can tell Jesus we are disappointed. We can even let him know that we are frustrated and angry. But we must always, always affirm our hope that God will never, ever let us down. We see this play out in the life of Jesus himself. Next Sunday is Palm Sunday. We will read the narrative of Jesus' passion when from the cross he cries out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? At the moment of his crucifixion, Jesus seemed defeated. His enemies seemed to have triumphed. However, we know it is to be the greater expression of God's love for us. Jesus could have come down from the cross, but he wanted to achieve something even greater than an end to his suffering. Namely, he wanted to achieve our salvation. His resurrection from the dead three days later would also not have happened. There is so much that we don't understand about the way God works. However, if we believe in his love, we will trust that no matter what happens, it will be for our good. If our greatest desire is that God be glorified, then we will be able to endure any difficulty, any suffering, and any cross that comes our way. Jesus assures us once again today, if we only believe, we will see the glory of God. I have a little prayer card in my daily prayer book that I read every morning as a powerful reminder in my life. And it says this, we do not know what 
the future holds. But we do know who holds the future. My sisters and brothers, during this extremely challenging and difficult time in all of our lives, we are tempted to lose hope and despair. Please know that my prayers are with you and the encouragement today that God will never, ever abandon you. God can and work miracles in our lives. God can bring life from death. We just have to stay strong and believe. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Together now, let us profess our faith. I believe, believe in, in one God, God the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My sisters and brothers, trusting in the life-giving power of the Spirit, we now lift up our prayers and our petitions to our Father in heaven. That all leaders and members of the church may be graced with the guidance and wisdom of the Holy Spirit, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That world leaders may be helped by God in putting aside selfish agendas and seek justice and the well-being of all people under their care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are in mourning may be consoled by God in their grief and made confident in the hope of resurrection for their loved ones. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For scientists, healthcare professionals, public officials, and all who are serving the common good in this difficult and uncertain time, that they will be filled with wisdom and understanding. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are struggling at this time, especially those who are sick and in need of healing, may our compassionate God touch all affected by the current outbreak with healing and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that our beloved dead and all those who have died may know the joy and fullness of life in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our living and deceased parishioners and benefactors for whom this Eucharist is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O merciful God, with humble confidence now, we ask you to hear these prayers that we have spoken out loud and those that we hold in the silence of our hearts, that they may be according to your holy will, through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Pray now, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be pleasing and acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for his good and the good of all his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as true man, he wept for Lazarus, his friend. And as eternal God, raised him from the tomb. Just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, 
in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis, our Pope, the order of bishops, the priests, deacons, consecrated religious, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire us in words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection. Give them the fullness of life. And grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy kingdom come, come thy will be done, be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, for the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory, and the glory are yours, yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And we pray today that peace will fill your hearts and your homes. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Eat this bread, drink this cup. 
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And our prayer now for Father Baker's canonization. Lord, you gave us your servant, Nelson Baker, as an example of service to the poor, homeless, and young. By Father Baker's ardent concern for those in need, inflame our hearts and lives with compassion for the poor, justice for the oppressed, hope for the troubled, and courage to those in doubt. We pray through the intercession of Our Lady of Victory, if it be your will, that your servant, Nelson Baker, may one day be canonized. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady of Victory, pray for us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Please bow your heads now and pray for God's blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy and grant that what at your prompting they desire, they may receive by your generous gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go now in peace to glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.